Following the end of World War II, there was a race to develop technologies to protect nations against future global conflicts. And this led to a huge investment in cutting edge technologies. In the UK, the first computers were developed in Bletchley Park by the incredible inventing minds such as Alan Turing and Tommy Flowers. While in the US, the first attempts at sending messages between computers really took off in the 1960s with ARPANET. However, widespread public use of these technologies only came when Tim Berners-Lee, a physicist at the CERN laboratory in Switzerland, developed an idea he called the World Wide Web. He hoped that scientists could use connectivity between computers to share ideas and data. And around the same time, developments in computer building meant that computers in places like homes and schools became a real possibility as they became both smaller and cheaper to produce. I'm from the generation who were the first to own a home computer. Forty-somethings like me might remember owning a Sinclair Spectrum or a Commodore 64. And for those younger than me, perhaps you even had a PC at home or a chunky, clunky laptop. My first experience of using the internet was in the early 1990s, waiting as the head teacher in my first school connected his PC via a modem and a telephone wire to the BBC website. Little did I know how momentous this was and how life-changing the internet would be. I could hardly have predicted that 20 years later, I'd have my own device, which fits into the palm of my hand gave me access to millions of web pages dynamically generated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, practically anywhere. And when I watched my own young children using technology at home and at school, I realised that given the pace of technological change, it's impossible for me to imagine the technological world in which they will eventually live and work. 